today's quick and simple tip, you're going to learn how to prevent the most common musculoskeletal surgery in America. That's right, today we're getting rid of your knee pain and preventing knee surgery. We have our awesome patient, Catherine Duvendeck, with us, and she's just the most radical lady you'll ever meet. And that's not the only reason why we chose her to do uh, this tutorial and demonstrate for us, is also because she, like you, was suffering with knee pain in the past, so we thought she'd be the perfect person. Now, these tips can be incredibly beneficial. However, if you just recently had an acute trauma to your knee, don't run to this video looking for relief. The person who will benefit most is somebody who has had a chronic knee problem, whether it's from trauma or repetitive stress. Most people with chronic knee issues typically have some other type of problem going on in correlation. For example, most common is a back problem. Second most common, a foot problem. Um, how long have you had knee pain for? Over 10 years. More than 10 years, got it. Did you ever have any type of knee trauma or injury? No. Got it. And did you ever have any type of history of back pain? Lower back, um, about 30, more than 30 years ago. Got it. What did you do prior to doing any treatment here for your knee pain? Nothing. Why did you do nothing? I thought it was old age. Got it. <laughs> Since we've started doing treatments, and if you take care of your knee, do you have knee pain now? No. Awesome. Let's take a look at the three steps we take to correct and resolve chronic knee pain. First step we're going to do is work on the tracking of the knee which essentially means we're going to get the knee communicating better with the hip joint. And we've got one really important instrument to help us through this, a slingshot. So we just simply put this through the legs here. There you go. Put it right at the level of the knees. And then Catherine is going to put her feet perfectly straight. So go ahead and face and go hip width apart with your feet. From there, and she's already doing it because she knows how, she's already slightly bending her knees and her hips. Now, it's a slight flex. It's not a bend. It's just a little unhinge of the knee. That's it. And you don't want to move your knee forward because you're going to hinge your hips so that your weight is even. And then what you're going to see as she engages her hip muscles, which help the tracking of all the thigh muscles to the knee and guiding the knee, she's going to squeeze her butt muscles and push her knee out just like that. And then while holding her tummy in and sitting up tall, she's practicing the first step called the perfect stance, working the tracking. Step two of this progress is we're gonna be working range of motion into the knee, which we have to do very delicately. So what we've done is we've actually, we have Catherine holding onto the rail here, putting all of her weight falling backwards. So there's no weight going into the knee going forwards. From there, as she's actually pulling her knees open, like we talked about, to stabilize the track of her knee. We're going to have her drop down to her comfort. You always want to keep the knee behind the ankle, reducing shearing stress onto the, the meniscus and the ACL. And ultimately, we want to get as much range of motion into this knee. So if Catherine can, she's going to drop her hips all the way down to her heels, putting all of the weight into her feet compressing her hips and her knee while spreading her knees open. Her toes are perfectly straight and she's putting all of her weight falling backwards into uh, uh, behind her. But the third and final step, you need a special ingredient. Voodoo floss. Step three is to break down all the surrounding scar tissue that causes pain and lets you know in advance when it's about to rain. Due to the stiff fibrous fascial nature of the knee, it's really hard to stretch or decompress this scar tissue. However, attaching this bike tube style traction will actually help to break it down. Once you have voodoo floss on each end of the knee joint and your blood circulation is getting cut off, you're ready to go. So we have the perfect stance utilizing the slingshot to guide our squat, which we utilize to increase range of motion. And now we have the floss to break down scar tissue. Do about 15 reps, and bonus, if you have a vibration plate, you'll get even more scar tissue breakdown. Now, if you want to get a more long-term correction, don't forget to go to the root of the problem. In Catherine's case, she had 30 years of back problems. You might want to get those corrected too. Hey, if you found today's video helpful, awesome. 
Don't forget to share it with your friends and on your timeline. This is the most common surgery done and it's way overutilized. Secondly, if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave those below. We do respond to those and we want to help you out any way that we can. So have a great day and I look forward to talking to you soon.